For our Olympic project, we chose the sport of speed skating. So the history of speed skating, um, it originated in Scandinavia and started out as people racing on frozen rivers and lakes. It became a sport in the Olympics in 1924 in Charmont, France. Um, Dutch are the pioneers of speed skating and they used and started speed skating to reach and deliver communication to different parts and villages in the area. Um, it was a... Only a men were allowed to compete until 1932, and then it became a woman's sport. So they could compete, but it wasn't added to the Olympics until 1960. What is speed skating? Um, it's a competitive form of ice skating and around an ice track. There are different distances and races for it, and those are there's the men's. 500, 1,000, 1,500, 5,000, 10,000 meter races, plus a mass start and a team pursuit. And the women's, it's a little different. It's 500, 1,000, 1,500, 3,000, and 5,000 meter, plus a mass start and team pursuit. Um, there's different types of speed skating, and they have a long track, a short track, a marath and a marathon track speed. Um, speed track, and so... The, in the Olympics, the long track is known as just speed skating, so that's what we're focusing on. So the rules of speed skating, there's kind of a lot, and it's kind of complicated. But for the officials, they have a referee and assistant referee. They have two starting line judges. They have a finishing line judge, a chief, and an assistant chief timekeeper. Um, and they have multiple track judges. They have two judges on the corners. They have one on the finishing straight one on the crossing, con one is a crossing controller, and then they also have ice experts and sport experts on the site too. And then for timing, they have two different things for timing. They have one automatic and one's manual. The automatic is the one that we see when we watch it on TV, and then they have a manual person who's keeping the time just in case there's a technical difficulty or a glitch in the time, they always have a backup. Um, for the draw, this is just to decide who goes first, and they take everyone who's in that heat, and they have a meeting, and then they base off who's going first off of the rankings of previous races that the skaters have done. Um, for the start, you cannot go to the line or start without a signal or it constitutes as a false start. And then the crossover rule, you have to have one lane change each lap, and this is because the inside lane is a shorter distance than the outside lane um the lane change takes place at the crossing straight and then the person who is changing from the outer lane to the inner lane gets the right of way so if there's any collisions um then the person penalized is the person who was in the inside lane of the track and then a skater can be disqualified for cutting lanes or leaving the inner curve at any point in the race so for one of our concepts, um, we picked building momentum, and we know momentum is the quantity of motion of a moving body measured as a product of its mass and velocity. So um, they start out in like a fast running um, with their legs and feet externally rotate as they push off the ice. They're pushing off obliquely. Um, and while they're doing that, they're swinging their arms backward into the side they're not swinging it back and forth or back and forward it's just back into the side so that helps them um keep their body straight because if they didn't their body would turn um because of how they're pushing off the ice and also it helps them get faster um and then once they get to where they are fast enough they start skating and they put their arms behind their back because that also helps them propel them forward with their with the momentum. Um, our second concept was friction, and friction is the resistance that one surface or an object encounters when moving over another. Um, we talked about this in class about how you want different um, car wheels for different roads, I guess. And this is just the same as for skates and ice. A skater... They do not want a lot of friction, but they want some friction just so they can stop or turn corners quickly. But they don't want a lot of friction so they can keep up their high intensity speeds. And um, they do this 
with two different things. They have different types of skates. As you can see, the pictures are different. And the top one is a clap skate, which means the hill is not connected to the blade. And the blade for speed skating has no curve, and this is different from short track or figure skating or hockey. Even these skates and blades are different. And this just helps so they can dig into the ice and stop and speed up and help them turn. But the clap skates, they help when the foot lifts up off the ice, the blade disconnects with the skate, leaving the blade on the ice a little longer just to help increase the push power. So this is also how they manipulate the friction just to keep going. And then they also um, do it by manipulating the ice and they put a thin film of liquid water on the ice. And when the th thin film of water is connected with the blade there is a result of low friction so it helps the skaters keep high speeds and for the center of mass this is our third concept and center mass is the mean position of matter in the body and as you can see in both of these pictures the speed skaters have lowered themselves um, closer to the ground or the ice which lowers their center of mass and this helps reduce um, air resistance on the skater to help them go faster and accelerate and maintain greater speeds while they're racing. Um, lowering the center of mass helps with balance. And because they have so much force pressing against them, if they didn't lower their body or crouch low to keep their center of mass low, then the momentum would just fall, have them fall backwards. So by them crouching and keeping their center of mass low, um, it helps them create a counter movement so that they won't fall for backward and they will just continue to go forward and keep the speeds up. Um, so lowering their center of mass helps with balance and it helps them, especially when they're turning corners, there's a lot, just a lot of, um, force pushing against them. So lowering it is just a counter movement against that. And for the results for the Olympics this year, there was a lot of different heats, so I just took two heats out of the men's and women's. Um, the U.S. didn't place in the f first three in any of these heats, and I just put what the USA took in the heat. But a couple of the people stood out to me, like uh, Sven Kramer. He's a distance runner in the men's 5,000 meter. Um, he participated in the Vancouver 2010, Sochi 2014, and Piaget 2018 Olympics, and he took gold in every single um, Olympics in this particular heat. And then another person who also stood out to me was Nao Kodera. She's a sprint skater in the women's 500 meter, and she participated in Vancouver 2010 Olympics, but she placed fifth in all three of the heats of the 500,000 and 1500 meter race. I read that she went back and she practiced on her starts and how she was going to start and she worked on her sprinting and in this Piaget 2018 Olympics she took gold in the 500 and the silver in the 1000 meter. So obviously she had a big improvement on her skating from taking fifth to getting the gold. And these are the results of the twin winter 2018 Piaget Olympics in speed skating.